We have the pleasure of having John Kasner here with Life with Murder, a Canadian production. And uh, John is no, uh, he's not allergic to receiving awards. He won three Emmys. He has an extensive film career. Uh, first of all, welcome to the Hamptons, John. Thank you so much. I'm loving this. And our neighbor from the North, Canada, we're always welcoming Canadians here and their excellent products. And this, no doubt, is an outstanding product, uh, an outstanding movie, Life with Murder. And it's a sensitive uh, story, a story that kind of, when you look at the, uh, uh, the film, it kind of evokes all sorts of feelings. And uh, uh, without tipping anything, I'd like to have you give just a little uh, thumbnail sketch of it. Yeah, it's a 90-minute documentary. It's uh, one of those things that uh, filmmakers dream will happen. You're in the middle of filming a story and something so extraordinary happens that it absolutely transforms the film. This is the story of uh, a 20-year-old guy named Mason Jenkins who's accused of murdering his younger sister, Jennifer, and mm. the parents have to make what is perhaps the worst choice a parent will ever have to make in life, mm -hmm. whether to break with Mason, and since there are no other children, it means basically obliterating their family, uh -huh. or whether to welcome back into the family the son who probably murdered their, their daughter. Mm -hmm. And he professes his innocence all, for, for all through the mm -hmm. film and for 10 years, and we discovered in the middle of the shooting who actually did murder uh, Jennifer Jenkins, and the murderer confesses on camera. Everybody finds out, the police, the parents, everybody, what actually happened. On the but up to that point, um, there's that doubt whether or not the brother indeed uh, was, the, uh, was the one that murdered her. Absolutely. Without giving away who actually did it, the parents support him. It's, it's remarkable. And we're ostracized. Chatham's a small town near Detroit, mm -hmm. and um, 40,000 people. And although they both lost their daughter and, in effect, their son, people would cut them in the streets and pay. Uh, they, they became recluses. They, they went home at night and they wouldn't go out and uh, terrible mm -hmm. stigma. And yet they supported their son all of those years. They go to visit him in prison. People criticized them for that. They said, well, this is a betrayal of Jennifer. How could you, how could you want to talk to him mm -hmm. after what he, what he did? So, but, yeah. but it opens up a whole thing within, I guess, the human psyche on forgiveness and on uh, throwing away um, another uh, child of yours, no matter what happens. I mean, there, there's an old thing that if you come into the house with a bloody axe and uh, you say, Ma, I didn't kill him, you, the Ma would always say, of course, son, just sit down and have a bowl of soup and uh, you know, put the axe down and, and always have that safe harbor with your parents. I mean, it, it, that, that goes with the territory of being a parent and also a child. But I can understand the other side of it where society says, well, you don't want to have a guy like that and, to, you know, uh, you she should be uh, executed as well. So now you're left with no children. So you're so right. It's a study of unconditional love, which mm -hmm. is what some parents feel. You're right. And there is a huge division of opinion. The, the chief of police of this town said to me, if my son... Uh, murdered my daughter, I'd break with him. And if my wife decided to support him, I'd divorce her in wow. a heartbeat. Strong wow. feelings. Well, very strong. And that's something that the viewers at home, uh, in, the, uh, in the silence of their own homes, that's a question that they can ponder. And I'm pretty sure that sitting in a, in a darkened theater watching this, that certainly you know, courses through your mind is what you would do if you were confronted with this situation. What brought this project to you? How did you sort of... Uh, it was um, an accident. I was in the same prison, the same unit, filming an earlier film called Monster in the Family about the opposite kind of parent, about a mother who, who washes her hands of her son when he becomes a criminal. And he's actually a very minor criminal. But this mother in this film actually leads a national campaign to have her son put away for life. Wow. She says when he gets out, he's going to murder hundreds of people. We got in there, we found it's nonsense. He's a very small-time criminal. But in the process of interviewing this other chap, he said, you know, my mother, I've been in prison for eight years. She's only visited me once. But there's this guy in here who has been convicted of murdering his sister. And his parents are always here. They come all the time. Wow. So I became interested in the, all, this wow. question of reconciliation when there's murder. But how fortuitous that, that, that in doing that one project that revealed another one, which is a bigger one. Amazing. It was an amazing mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, accident. Mm -hmm. And um, five years in the making, got to know the family. And uh, they had been burned so often by the media that it took some time to... Uh, 
to get them to fully come around. Mm -hmm. They agreed r right away. But to open up your, can you imagine how painful mm -hmm. it would be to come home and you find your daughter, she was shot with five gunshot wounds. Oh and the next thing the police say, we believe that How old was the daughter? Daughter was 18. My God. Yeah. I mean, just the worst. And having just reeling from this horrific mm -hmm. discovery, then the police tell you, we think it's your son mm -hmm. that did it. You know? So your daughter's gone, your son is a suspect. Your house, uh, just the visuals and the, the trauma that uh, a murder, it's not what you see on TV, on CSI, it's quite uh, horrific and it's something that uh, you cannot sanitize out of, your, uh, out of your memory banks to have something like that and to live with it must have been unbelievable. These are exceptional people. Ten years ago, on January the 6th, our daughter was murdered in our home. She was 18. Her name was Jennifer. It was a horrible act of violence. She'd been shot. She had been shot in the head. Our lives changed horribly from that time on. Your mother, you know, she has a sweet tooth. Oh, that's it? So, yeah, oh yeah. After our tragedy, it left us with just uh, Brian and me and Mason to uh, put the family back together as best we could, but that was a pretty difficult task given the fact that Mason was 20 at the time and after the murder of Jennifer, he was arrested and tried and found guilty of murdering his sister. In a special visiting area for families on prison grounds, the Jenkins are doing their best to act normally. This is the story of how an otherwise law-abiding middle-class family tries to learn to live with murder. <laughs> 